Hello and welcome to the Fast Track Travel Clinic with me, Simon Calder. Incidentally, I was one of the millions caught up in the six-day shutdown of European airspace last month. I ended up coming back from Norway aboard a container ship. Yep, I went out as an airline passenger, came back by sea as freight. Anyway, many of you have been writing to us here at Fast Track about the disruption, including Sandra da Concepcion Fontinha. We had our flight with Air Namibia from Whithook to Frankfurt cancelled. The airline didn't arrange nor pay for accommodation, and they didn't want to try to reroute us with other airlines. Are there any standard global rules for aviation? In other words, should Air Namibia pay for something? Sandra, there is a global treaty that applies to aviation. It's the Montreal Convention 1999. Basically, it says that an airline ticket is little more than a promise to get you from A to B, possibly via C, as expeditiously as the airline can manage. And with a caveat that if extraordinary circumstances intervene, there's no duty of care to passengers. The volcanic ash saga was a good example of extraordinary circumstances, of course. Now, the EU stipulates a much more substantial duty of care regardless of the cause. Had you been travelling on a European airline, you would have enjoyed your meals and accommodation at their expense. Next, Nish in Brussels is undeterred by the prospect of more volcanic disruption. Which is currently best for today's market? Is it last minute or first minute deals? Nish, there are still some of us who remember the great deals that were around in the 1980s for standby passengers. Basically, if you were prepared to take a chance on getting the last seat on a flight at the last minute, you got the absolute lowest fares, especially on the transatlantic run. Unfortunately, the airlines cottoned on to the fact that business travellers were taking advantage of standby tickets. So these days, the rule is that the early passenger gets the best deal. Any peak season flights around school vacations or big holidays are only ever going to get more expensive. But if airlines see that particular off-peak flights aren't selling well, they'll often cut fares for short-term seat sales to fill up their aircraft. And in my experience, that usually happens between two months and two weeks before departure. So you could hold your nerve until then. Derek Swenson, who lives and works in Bahrain, fell foul of an all too frequent aviation hurdle on a recent trip to Scotland's capital. Having booked return flights with BA from Bahrain to Edinburgh, I decided to stop overnight in London. I told the check-in staff in at Bahrain and made alternative arrangements to get to Edinburgh. When I tried to book in at Edinburgh for my return flight, I was told my booking had been cancelled in accordance with standard practice. Derek, I agree, it sounds ridiculous. You actually save the airline the trouble of flying one of the sectors on your ticket and they punish you by cancelling your booking. Unfortunately, many of the so-called legacy carriers, such as BA, take this step to stop passengers indulging in what's called tariff abuse, taking advantage of wrinkles in the airline's fare structures. You are actually lucky that they let you rebook for the following day's departure, because if you fail to take the flights in the order specified on your ticket, they can theoretically make you pay again. Well, that's all we've got time for in this session of the Fast Track Travel Clinic. If you've got an issue with an airline, hotel chain or tour operator that you'd like us to address, or you just need some plain old-fashioned travel advice, then email me here using the usual address, which is fasttracktravel, that's all one word, at bbc.co.uk, and I'll do my very best to find you an answer. From me, Simon Calder, bye for now, and see you next time.